Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Laura. I am a PhD student of comparative literature in Germany and act currently I'm doing a series on Gothic and Romantic literature on this channel where I talk about different Gothic and Romantic stories from all over the world. And today I want to talk about a very classic Gothic ghost story by Susan Hill. It's called The Woman in Black and was published in 1983, so it's a rather young Gothic story. Um, I just want to quickly summarize the story to you and also read some of the quotes that I find to be the best to illustrate the style and the way that Susan Hill narrates the story. I've got the book here on my Kindle reader. This is where I read most of my books because it's so handy and you can carry hundreds of books with you wherever you go, which is great, I think. So the story is about Arthur Kipps. He is a solicitor in England and one Christmas Eve he sits there together with his family and they are all asking each other to tell a ghost story and everyone's very excited, but Arthur Kipps is reminded of a horrible event in his past and he tells about this event and he also tells the readers about this event. So what has been hap happening this when he was very young, he was sent to a very small market town in northeast England. It is called Crith in Glyfford and he was sent there to settle the estate of the widow Alice Drablow who recently died and he has to deal with all her affairs and at first he goes there to attend her funeral and at this funeral he meets a young woman in black. He's, she's dressed in black and she's got a very pale face and she looks rather ill and very irritating. And when he asks other people about this woman they all react strangely and they don't really want to talk about it, which is already rather strange. So he is actually sent to the house. It's called Eel Marsh House. I think it's a wonderful title for such a house. So you can almost imagine already that it's a big house located at the coast and surrounded by the forest and the marshes. And whenever the tide is high, the house is cut off completely from the rest of the town. So it's very eerie and very mysterious and gloomy um, so he's like not the happiest to go there alone and to settle all the affairs and sort through all the papers of Mrs. Alice Drablow alone but that's what his job is so he goes there and soon when he when he stays at the place he hears weird noises and sounds and he feels like the house might be haunted and he actually meets the woman in black several times and he realizes that it must be a ghost of a woman. And I just want to read some passages to you because um, like Arthur Kipps, he wants to find out what has been going on at this place, what's the story behind this, why is there this ghost haunting the house and why is nobody in town really willing to talk about is why are they also reluctant and refusing to reveal any information and um, I just want to quickly read some of the quotes to you that were most striking to me. So she's, he's one time when he's just arriving there he um, just checks around the surroundings and he goes for a walk and there is a burial ground with gravestones, but he, he cannot read the inscriptions. And there's one quote I found really, really good. But as I turned away, I glanced once again round the burial ground, and then I saw again the woman with the wasted face, who had been at Mrs. Drabler's funeral. She was at the far end of the plot, close to one of the few upright headstones, and she wore the same clothing and bonnet, but it seemed to have slipped back, so that I could make out her face a little more clearly. In the greyness of the fading light, it had the sheen and pallor not of flesh so much as of bone itself. 
earlier when I had looked at her, although admittedly it had been scarcely more than a swift glance each time, I had not noticed any particular expression on her ravaged face, but then I had, after all, been entirely taken with the look of extreme illness. Now, however, as I stared at her, stared until my eyes ached in their sockets, stared in surprise and bewilderment at her presence, now I saw that her face did wear an expression. It was one of what I can only describe, and the words seem hopelessly inadequate to express what I saw, as a desperate, yearning malevolence. It was as though she were searching for something she wanted, needed, must have more than life itself, and which had been taken from her. And by this quote you already get a glimpse of the tragedy that has been going on. So it's about this woman in black and there's something that has been taken of her and we don't know what, but we learn about it throughout the story. And the way the story is told is really great because Arthur Kipps, he really is determined to find out what has been happening and he doesn't shy away from the ghosts and the haunting and all the strange noises and things happening around the place. And there's a very friendly man, he's called Mr. Daly, Samuel Daly, and he um, lends him his dog just to, to accompany him during his stay at Eel Marsh House because this way he's not so alone and there's a living, breathing being that is warm and that he can cuddle, cuddle with um, whenever he, he needs someone to assist him. And um, together with this dog he explores the, the grounds and there's really horrible things going on and he's freaking out and creeped out after a while. I won't reveal anything more because in case you want to read the story yourself and find out what has been happening to the woman in black, who is the woman in black even, how is she connected to the house and what is the thing that she's missing, I really recommend reading the story. Mm, I think I won't read any other quote because this what was actually the quote that was most striking to me to illustrate the woman in black and the way the woman in black is presented. Um, it's really wonderfully written. I think Arthur Kipps is a very likable character and it's great to follow his journey and you already know at the beginning that there's been tragedy happening and horrible things that he cannot really deal with so well but he's still willing to tell the story and as a reader I couldn't really stop I had to go on and on and it was a wild ride <laughs> to read um, I think it's actually one of the greatest gothic novellas that I ever read because it's got all the gothic elements that you could look for in a story it's got ghosts, it's got haunting, it's got the perfect setting, it's got the right tone because it's like a little gloomy and also very exciting, the tension is growing more and more. At the same time it's calm enough so that you uh, can take your time as a reader to reflect on it and to um, think about everything going on and I think everything about it is just done great. It's <laughs> the tone, the setting, the themes are also greatly executed here. If you want to chat about it some more just let me know. Um, I hope you liked this short introduction to The Woman in Black. I really enjoyed the story and I hope you enjoy it too. I haven't seen the movie yet. Um, I am about to do so. If you have seen it and want to tell me how you liked it, leave a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I'd be glad to see you do that and see you in my next video, which will be about the ghost story challenge by Mary Shelley, Percy Shelley, Lord Byron and John Polidori. Uh, see you next Friday and I'm looking forward. Bye.